You're watching The View. View. The G View. GViewTV.com. Entertainment for you. Interviews, previews, and reviews. Welcome back to GView TV. I said it before that we're going to have our mortgage agent specialist passing through our studios tonight. Nicole is here again. We're going to talk about mortgage. Good night, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. Good night. Thank nice you. to meet yes. you. Nice meeting you as well. Yes. How is things out there in the market? Well, I will say it's it definitely is um, a, more challenging, right? But with challenge, there's always opportunity. We still have to remain positive. But now is the time where it is even much more important that you do work with a very strong mortgage professional in order to successfully get yourself into the market, especially if, the, if this is going to be your first time entering into the real estate market. So 2016 was a booming year. Yes. 2017 was looking good. Mm -hmm. I haven't visited the market since 2017. What is 2018 looking like now for buyers and sellers? Well, at the moment, um, really within, especially in the GTA, um, sales are pretty soft compared to you know the past couple of years. Home prices have started to take a bit of a decline. Um, it is an opportunity that it is becoming more of a buyer's market rather than a seller's market because the inventory, so whenever the inventory is low, um, it's an opportunity now for people to take their time and um, kind of get out there and see what's there, so. And for those who never, never got into buying a house, mm -hmm. Explain what's a buyer's market and what the what is a, a seller's market. So, you know, just think about it. Early last year, people were play, putting their homes on the market, and they would list it for let's say five hundred thousand. Then you were hearing, oh, the house sold for two hundred thousand above asking, okay. because there was such a high demand for the actual property. People were now starting to. Um, do multiple offers so that they were bidding up the actual price. So people were starting to feel as though I, you know, I don't even want to put an offer in because simply every time I'm putting an offer in, my offer is being rejected. It wasn't uncommon for there to be, you know, sometimes five, six, sometimes even ten offers on one single home. Wow. You know, now it's kind of taken the reverse. Now, um, because there isn't as many um, qualified buyers out there. Um, the inventory is a little bit higher, so people have an option to, you know, take their time and look and place offers, and um, it kind of has brought the prices back in line to where, you know, the market should be somewhat more comfortable. Now, when you say qualified buyers, I know the government changed some rules as of 2018. What yes. do we need to know? Yes, so a lot of rules that have come in with the, the mortgage stress test testing. Um, so some of the rules came in um, towards the mid part of 2017, which affected primarily people who had less than 20% down. Um, they were saying we have to use a, new, a now qualifying rate to qualify, even though the, the bank might offer you a rate that's significantly lower. They wanted to see that you could comfortably make and afford payments based on the higher interest rate in the event that the market changed. but. What Sorry. has changed? Now, when you say 20%, is that the standard? Well, this is less than 20%. Okay. So, for people that that would affect, we're perhaps mostly like first time home buyers, mm -hmm. people who may be, be moving into their secondary home but haven't necessarily built up enough equity or have enough to put down 20%. So, they were less than 20%, right? right? Um, but what has changed as of January 1st is now for individuals who are putting down 20% and higher. Um, they also now have to go through the stress testing. So simply put, if the bank is offering you a rate of, let's say, uh, 3.99, we as mortgage agents have to add an additional 2% on top of that to qualify you. So we would be qualifying you at a rate of 5.99, which in, the, in essence, it looks as though um, your required income in order to service that property would need to be higher. Right. Mm -hmm. e and that's even though you have your 20%. That's even though. And you're saying it, it would matter. look like or it actually is? So your payment will still be reflective based on what you are able to negotiate with the lender. So you still would make your payments based on 3.99. Okay. Yes. But qualifying you 
we would have to qualify you based on 5.99. So I'm not certain if you're familiar, if you've heard of, there's two terms, the total debt servicing ratio, and then um, we, so which is your TDS, and we also have your GDS, which is your gross debt servicing ratio. Right. So those are the two key factors that lenders look at to say, okay, what is the income that you have versus all of your household required uh, payments as well as existing debt? And are you comfortably within a zone where we're willing to lend to you? Okay. Okay. So what if my, my income, I, I went to the bank and for me, I look, writing it down on paper, mm -hmm. it looked like if, if, if I get the lender to mm -hmm. give me 3.4, mm -hmm. just to say, 3.4 on paper, mm -hmm. and I, I come in to take the, the, the stress test, Yes. you guys put 2% on that. Yes. So I fail. Mm-hmm. It, that's it for me? Well, it's not really a fail. Let's let's put it that way. Yes. So it's just a matter more of looking at different options. Mm -hmm. So now this is where we as professionals, you know, have to really set proper expectations. Sometimes, you know, people sometimes skip a step. So when I say skip a step, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I need that dream home. I need that dream yes, home. I need all these, you know, amazing finishes right now. Sometimes we say, okay, well, why not just get in the market? Get your foot in, help build some equity, and then eventually do the, the secondary purchase in a couple of years, right. right? And there are still some great programs out there that I, I am working with a lot of clients with right now. One of them is the Purchase Plus Improvements Plan. And what that does is it allows individuals to maybe buy a somewhat distressed home uh, and then basically get in, hopefully at a better price, because the home isn't necessarily... Uh, home show ready and then uh, go back to the lender and say to them well I'm buying this home and I'm going to be doing certain renovations mm -hmm. the renovations will obviously bring it to a standard where it's comfortable for you and your family but then you're getting in hopefully at a lower price point right, right? so this stress home is what we call a fixer a fixer upper yes and that's an option so this is a strategy that you know I am using with a lot of people who want to enter the market. So they say, I really want a, dis, uh, a detached home. And I say, okay, well, you want a detached home? And they're saying, oh, I want granite countertops. I want stainless steel. I want there to be hardwood throughout. I want it to have four bedrooms. I want it to have like all these key things that sometimes when you do that, all it does is it's like a grocery list. As your grocery list goes up, so does the purchase price. Right. So I say, you know what, why not as a strategy, look at some of these homes that have the structured things that you want. Maybe it has the four bedrooms, but maybe it's in a home that hasn't had renovations in, let's say, 30, 40 years. So the kitchen might look ugly, right? Right. But if you have the time and you have the patience and you can get a good team that works with you, this is an opportunity where we say, okay, this is something that we can look at and say, okay, get in, buy the home. You're probably going to get it at a discount versus what the actual market is worth because it is distressed. Mm -hmm. And then with the Purchase Plus Improvement Program, you're able to present it to the lender and say, well, I'm going to be doing X amount in re renovations. They will lend you the money. You can then hire the contractors of your choice. They would allow you to then do whatever upgrades and finishes that you want. And now you've essentially gotten yourself the into the made. home, the custom okay. home that you want. So what if you have the 20% or even yes. the 25%, mm -hmm. but your credit is not so good? How can you help those people? Okay, well, there's definitely options. So we were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, it's essentially like baseball, three strikes you're out, okay? So as long as you can get at least two of the three, you will be fine. So one is you have income, you have credit, and the other is you have cash, right? Okay. So in that situation, if you have 25% down, you've kind of now said that, okay, I have the cash, my credit's bruised, but I have the income. There are lenders out there um, that will definitely assist you. And most of them are looking at a minimum of 80% loan to value, which is a 20% down. Okay, so yeah. people, if you have bad credit, know yeah. that there's still hope. There's definitely options. Now, Some people are shy away. It, well, they are. This is it. Yeah. Well, my other thing was, you, you're saying first-time buyer and secondary buyer. Yeah. Now, is there an advantage to be a first-time buy, first buyer why they want to do this as opposed to doing it twice? Well, it's not that it's, there's a 
essentially it's just it's, it's when you've entered the market. Right. So there's no advantage or disadvantage. It's just that typically we see that with first time home buyers, they're the ones who typically will say, okay, I only have 5% saved. So then they, then they typically look like a high ratio client. So high ratio means you have to go through one of the insurers in order to get your mortgage qualified. Mm. Um, so there's not really a major advantage or disadvantage, um, but it's just a matter of what you come to the table with. Okay. There are some perks that the Ontario government has introduced. Um, like at this point, they do give you a rebate towards your land transfer taxes. Right. As a first time home buyer, you could also take advantage of the home buyers withdrawal program which, uh, so for anybody who has saved into RRSPs, you can take up to $25,000 out of the RRSP as a first time home buyer. Tax free, is that tax it free? It is tax free, but it is technically a loan that you're giving to yourself. So you do have to repay into it. Um, but what it does do is it allows you to access these funds that you perhaps wouldn't be able to access without paying the withholding tax. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, talking about buying a distress house, um, some someone buy bought a, a distress house in what we quote unquote not so good of a community. Yes. Fix it up really nice. Mm -hmm. it, it does it affect that person when it's time to sell it back in to case. the market? Very good. Very good question. So essentially we always say you have to do things so there's times when we do things based on emotion. And then there's times when we do things based on like an investor, right? So what I say is whenever you're going to be doing um, renovations, and that's in any home, regardless of the neighborhood that you're in, you're going to want to have your investor cap on, especially if you don't plan on making this your forever home. If this is your forever home, then it doesn't matter. But if let's say you're saying my game plan is in the next three to five years, I'm going to be selling, mm -hmm. you want to know that you're doing renovations that are smart. So an example, somebody who might start off with four bedrooms and then they say well I want this massive walk-in closet and then they tear down a bedroom to make a massive walk-in closet is that really as an investor a smart thing to do I would say no because there's benefit in having four bedrooms versus three bedrooms mm -hmm. right so this is where you're gonna really want to maybe sit down with a, a really good qualified real estate agent and say what are some smart renovations that I can do that's going to actually help boost the actual um, marketability of the property rather than hinder the marketability of the property but you know human nature is people will still do some things that they want to do you just know that you're doing it without actually positively affecting the value so can you be a first-time home homeowner more than once so you bought your house 15 mm -hmm. years ago you sold it got out of it you've been renting and now you want to go back again so the technical answer so people would say no because you've already bought a home but yeah. technically when it comes to some of the programs in which the government offers including the RSP home buyers withdrawal plan yes right after how long so um, once you've been so you couldn't have been a homeowner at least for for five calendar years right okay. so you know you that could have been let's say I uh, I, I owned a place, but then I fell on hard times or something changed and I went back and I moved home or I started renting, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, technically, yes, you do at that point become a first time home buyer, but that's really when it comes to the home buyer's withdrawal plan. Okay, and finally, the bankruptcies. Yes. What about the people who have discharged and undischarged bankruptcies? How yes. does that work in when they want to own a home now? Yes. So when it comes to bankruptcies, believe it or not, there's a lot of lenders that will lend as long as you have been discharged. The key is that it does need to be discharged. And for most lenders, it's uh, there are some lenders that you can be discharged today, they'll lend to you tomorrow, okay. right? But obviously you know that it's going to be at a fee, there's going to be some cost, and depending on how much you really want to get into it, some clients are willing to pay that, right? But for the majority, it's after a year. So you've been discharged one year, a lot more lenders will start coming to the table and looking at your application. Okay. okay. And how many, how, how many people you would say would, would, a percentage of people that shy away sometime and just think, Oh, I'll have bad credit and yes. I can't buy a house. It happens it, all is the time. A high percentage? It does happen all the time. And I tell people, like, don't, because sometimes what you think is bad isn't necessarily bad. And sometimes what you think, oh, I don't have any options, there's always an option available. And even if, let's say, you say, I, my credit is really bad and I don't want to necessarily pay the higher interest 
rate through specific lenders, working with someone like myself, we help to actually educate you, get you on the right path. If it takes 12 months, we will work with you. If it takes 18 months, we'll work with you. So what you're saying is you help them to build their credit exactly. to get it to a point where they don't have to do the higher interest rate. Now, if they wait a year, exactly. they build their credit and then their interest rate will go exactly, down. Exactly, right? So I say even if you feel you're in a position that is unfavorable, you know, working with someone like myself, where there's no judgment, we're here to really help. Like, this is my own mission. It's to help, to improve, and get people into home ownership, right? So we need somebody who specializes in it. You can't yes. just go to a random person because exactly. you won't get all the information you, you won't. need. You won't, exactly. And especially right now with what's happening with the stress test, you definitely need somebody. It's, it's not a knock to the banks, but, you know, I used to, I came from the banking world, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, you have some people that are doing like 20 different things. They're selling, you know, a new bank account. They're selling a mortgage. They're selling an investment. They don't have the time or the wherewithal to actually just focus on that one area. Working with somebody where this is all they do, 24 seven, you know, um, we understand what it takes. And as I said, we're looking at ways to help structure deals that will get them done. So tell us again, what is it specifically that you do? Yes. So I am a mortgage agent. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to help obviously align qualified buyers with lenders, right? And again, qualified can mean different things for different people. It doesn't necessarily mean perfect credit, perfect income, you know, um, great down payment. Like I said, if you have two of the three, we can work with you. So if you have terrible credit, but you have money and you have an income which you can actually pay for the home, I can get you into a home, okay. right? If you have income, have good credit, I can get you into something. It might not necessarily be that ideal dream home, but this is where like someone like myself provides solutions. Let's think about the purchase plus improvements. Yeah. Let's think about long other long-term strategies. You know, you can get in now, build some equity, and then we can look at flipping it in the next three years and saying, okay, what can we do next, right? And then there's also other options that people will do is because a lot of lenders will include rental income. So this is another strategy I work with a lot with a lot of first time buyers is if you can get a dual income property, you occupy, let's say one part of the unit mm -hmm. and you rent out the other part of the unit, we can actually include market rent as part of your actual application. So as to in get the rent the house done. and rent out the basement. Well, you can or occupy, live in the basement exactly, and rent out the rent house, up, exactly. depending upon your needs. On your needs, exactly. And then that also gives you the opportunity to save exactly. for what you want. Exactly. Definitely. So, Nicole, thank you very much, you know, yes. for enlightening our viewers, mm -hmm. you know, big up to those who know, big up to who didn't know. Yes, exactly. It's always a pleasure. Um, what about this Money Boss Up workshop? Yes. So beginning in April, um, myself and a great uh, financial advisor, Ladine Dockery, will be hosting um, the Money Boss Up workshop. It's just an opportunity for us to work with like-minded individuals, for us to come up with strategies and get our money right. So we'll be talking about things such as what we've talked about today, tax planning, we'll be talking about real estate investing, uh, credit, budgeting, everything you can think of. Um, we're trying to um, really just get our community into a space of thinking that we can and we deserve wealth. So this is exactly what this program is about. It does start in April. It, there will be over five months. And um, we're just helping, hoping to actually just build it and help to build wealth. How uh, Five months, how often within the five months? Is it weekly and how long is each session? Yeah, so it's going to be a, a monthly meetup. Okay. Okay. At the very end, so we'll have, um, and basically it's going to be a lot of accountability. So we're not here just to, you know, play nice and do whatever. It's going to be a nice environment, but we're here to say, okay, if we start with a plan of X, Y, and Z, we want to make sure that over the course of a 12 month that you've accomplished that goal. So that might be for somebody saying, you know what, I don't know how to budget well, I need assistance with budgeting. You now have two professionals um, that are here to help walk you through this. So we teach you over five months. Once a month we, we meet physically, but you basically have us in your corner, not only for the year, but we're here to be your accountability partner in a sense, okay. right? 
Now, is this open to women and men? Is it? Yeah, it's open to everybody. It's okay. open to the full public. Um, again, if you want more information, you can definitely reach out to me directly. Um, I know the information will be available. Um, but it's something that I, I'm strongly encouraging people to take advantage of. Um, this is, it's not to say that it's a, it's a secret society or a circle for us, like for certain people alone, but let's be real. There's communities that are doing exactly this. Yes. They're teaching each other's their tips and tricks, how I've been able to accomplish certain things. Now you show me how you, how I can accomplish certain things. And this is how we can actually just help to build a society well, and built. a community within, you know, absolutely. Within and how, how could they reach you? Okay, so I am very social. I am at Mortgages by Nick, um, both on Instagram and Twitter. Um, but I also can be reached by phone if you want, 1-877-207-7204. Um, and specifically, if you want to get information on The Money Boss Up, we uh, you can actually email us at themoneybossup at gmail.com. So again, I am available uh, via phone at 1-877-207-7204. And if you want information specifically about The Money Boss Up, you can email us at themoneybossup at gmail.com. And again, I am social, so if you want to follow and just, you know, contact me through um, Instagram, Twitter, I am at Mortgages by Nick. Thank you very much, Nicole. It was a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much, you. guys. You know, I, I like this. Mm -hmm. I like this where, where you know, it's, it's educational for mm -hmm. our community, you know, and, and get our community out there, you yes. know, buy up some property. Exactly. And yeah. it's doable, right? Well, if, for me, it's the generational wealth. People want to get rich, but you want the wealth to pass mm -hmm. down so generations yes. from now, they can say, you know, Sean Pusher, my great, 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 great. Grand, we don't yeah. know him, but yeah, yeah. they didn't leave me Of course, thing. of course, exactly. That's what it's about. Own then. Yes. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, guys. Bless her. Thank yes. you. Okay, honey. Okay. Viewers on the outside, it's that time where all good things got to come to an end. Thank you very much for logging on to JView TV with the best internet television station. There is an internet line. Keep it locked. JView TV.